Since I believe hyperinflation is the most likely outcome, I want to look at it a little bit further. Hyperinflation has two technical aspects to it. Number one, the quantity of money is essential. If there are a lot more dollars relative to the amount of real goods and services out there, it is a prerequisite for hyperinflation. If we double the money in quantity relative to the goods and services, the end result is that prices will double because there are twice as many dollars chasing after the same amount of goods. This example shows that it's not really that the prices are going up so much as the value of those dollars are going down and that you need more dollars to buy the exact same amount of goods and services. A couple of tricks help keep the real economy from getting flooded with money. First, most money is kept in paper assets and out of the goods and services economy. When trillions only circulate in paper assets like stocks, bonds, and derivatives, it is kept out of the real economy. Also, when foreign nations hold our currency overseas to, say, buy oil or conduct international trade, those dollars are kept from the real goods and services economy of the United States. Number two, the other major technical element in hyperinflation is the velocity of that money. If the perception is that money is scarce, people tend to hold off paying their bills until the last minute and even slow pay. But as people find that the currency is losing purchasing power, people will find it necessary to spend that money as fast as they can before it loses more purchasing power and prices go up. But hyperinflations are really psychological events. Since there is certainly enough quantity of money relative to real goods and services to blow through a hyperinflation at any moment. And we know that they must create more money in order for the system to operate. The velocity of that money in circulation depends greatly on the expectations of inflation, which is why the elite manipulate the inflation numbers through their four tricks, but when they're debating policy, they only reference consumer inflation expectations. That is all they really care about, is what you think is going on. At some point, it won't be the few that are awake that, that see benign official inflation of 2% as a joke. People will see real prices rising, and they will start out of either necessity or greed to start dumping their money in paper assets and into real things as they become scarce and more expensive. It is at that point that I believe that we'll see real deflation of all things built on credit or bought with debt, and real inflation in things that have real tangible value and bought with cash. As people lose faith in the currency, and it fails to buy the necessities of life, people will sell paper assets trying desperately to maintain what they have been accustomed to and will focus more and more money at a faster velocity on things that are necessary for life. As this becomes more apparent to those in power, they will impose currency and market controls to keep money from flooding into markets, and this will only serve to limit availability and drive prices up further in the free economy. Then come the bank holidays and the heavy-handed politics, and it's all downhill from there.